Dan Hurley and UConn are coming for it all. You're locked on UConn. You are locked on UConn, your daily podcast on the UConn Huskies, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On UConn your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Do me a quick favor. See that little button on the bottom of your screen? Click that. Helps our channel grow, our audience grow, and frankly, I truly appreciate all of your support. If you're ever listening in your car or on an audio device, do me a favor, shoot me a five-star review. And finally, a special shout out to all my everydayers. Thanks for giving this new UConn content a shot and helping spread the gospel of UConn hoops. Let's all remember why we get to celebrate on Memorial Day. It's a day to dedicate, dedicated to honoring and remembering the men and women who have died while serving in the U.S. military. So if you ever serve, thank you for your service. If you ever mourn somebody, my grandfather was a World War II vet. So definitely a special day for a lot of folks that have military families. Uh, so if you're going to a barbecue, pool, whatever, remember why this day is so important. On today's episode, we have a special treat. The host of Connecticut Scoreboard Podcast. And he's going to co-host our Memorial Day extravaganza. Let's bring in Jared Collar. Hey, What's Mark. up, man? Hey, Mark. How's How it going? are you? Thanks for having me Good. on today. Uh, my, happy to be on. My here. pleasure. Yeah, I, I've been I've been wanting to have you on for a while. You know, you you've you've done some really great shows. Um, loving loving Connecticut Scoreboard podcast. If you're first time seeing Jared on here, make sure you go subscribe to his podcast as well, YouTube channel, everything that goes with it. Um, we're gonna let's do a rundown. We're gonna do everything that's on the rundown. We're gonna talk about the recap of the transfer portal. We're gonna re, we're gonna talk through our current roster. The guys just got to campus. I, I'm sure everyone is seeing Twitter. People like seeing their lockers, the numbers, like all all the fun stuff for the freshmen and the transfers. Um, and then the last thing we're gonna talk about is kind of looking towards the future with um, where this team is going. We've got a few targets for recruiting. Uh, but the first question for you is. We lose lose Apostolus to Richmond. You know, I hope he does a great job there. Get some get some really good uh, run there. Get some play. Yeah. Let's go with the first one. What did what was your impression first? Now that everything is locked in, we have Terrace Reed Jr. from Michigan. What was your initial thought when we got him? Yeah. No, I, I think it's uh, Terrace is a great pick. Uh, you know, clearly needs some help at the at the center position with with Donovan leaving. And I really trust this staff. This t- staff has done such a great job of being able to evaluate talent and find the right guys that fit into what they want to do. So any guys that this staff, that this staff targets, I- I'm in on a hundred percent. And I think, you know, he- he's got the big school pedigree coming from Michigan. Uh, I-, I think getting to work with our staff. I-, I remember when they first picked him up, there was a quote that uh, Juwan Howard last year used to show him Madama Sonogo highlights mm. and clips to, uh, to get him going and, and try to, you know, kind of simulate what they want to see from him. So who better to learn uh, about how to, uh, to play like Adama Sonogo than to go join the team and, and the staff that, that coached Adama Sonogo. So I'm high on Terrace Reed. Uh, I think he's going to be a really good addition, uh, bring some big size down, down low there. And uh, excited to see that one-two punch of him and Samson. These teams the past couple of years have had such a nice, great one-two punch at center, you know, Adama and Donovan, Donovan and Samson, and now you're going to have Samson and Terrace. And I, I think that really makes for a really nice one-two punch, keeps those guys fresh on their feet, uh, not too tired during these games. And uh, you, get, you got some different styles in the bigs, which I always think makes a nice uh, nice difference there. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Uh, you know, one of the things that I learned about him, and I had a guy come in that covers that had covered Terrace for a couple of years at Michigan, and then we had – um also uh one of our kind of insiders of just college basketball in, in general talking about his his he was a top 30 recruit uh so there's a lot of talent there and he was also there was also a quote in the athletic from Tobias Bass saying that he's a poor man's Adama Sonogo so you know like so that all of that is you know there's a reason why they pick up these guys and there's a reason why maybe a guy like Terrace who wasn't rated as high as dan hurley calls by outside entities uh you know like so that that could that could mean that they you know they have their own little war room and they have their own big board and i'm sure he was you know one of their top targets so yeah, yeah. It, it, to, to your point if, if if this staff wants them and they get them i feel good about it 
Yeah, if you're bringing a guy to the championship parade, you clearly want them. He, he was yes. what their their first target, I I, I think, coming yep. back from Phoenix. So uh, that just shows you what what this staff thinks of him. So I kind of you know what he's done at Michigan, what he's done in the past, you know, kind of put that in the back of my mind. But I, I think you get a, a new refresh player once he joins this staff and, and works with them a bit. Yeah, no, I I agree, and and let's let's pivot. So we got the guards. There was kind of a I wouldn't I wouldn't even call it a controversy. There was they had two guys come in, Aiden Mahaney and Kobe Brea. Um, obviously, they they offered to Aiden. Uh, I think while Kobe was going to his Kentucky uh, visit. So wh- why do you, why do you think I, I I have my feelings, but I'm curious as to why you think they went and leaned Aiden um, because I know there's there's always people who will say. If a if a coaching staff gets one guy, they didn't they either lost out on one, there's that thought, or they passed on him. So I tend to think with a defending national, two-time national champion, that you're passing on a guy. You're not yeah. being turned down. You know what I mean? So yeah. I feel like they made a decision. What's your thoughts on that? Yeah, no, I think I think there are only so many spots on the roster, and um, you know, I'm, I'm not sure how how it all went down between if if they passed, if it was who accepted first. However, that works. But I'm really happy with with, with who they got in in Aiden Mahaney. Both both Aiden and, and Kobe, great players. So I don't think he could have gone wrong either way. I think Aiden might have a little bit more versatility to his game and be able to do a little bit more from from them. But when you're looking at this roster, I think one thing that that Dan Hurley's always talked about is, is the culture and being able to maintain that culture that he's that he's built here at UConn. And I think part of that is developing players and you look at who's coming back. I know we're going to talk about the roster a little bit later, Mm -hmm. but when you see the guys coming back, you don't necessarily just because you have a spot open, need to fill it with, with a a transfer that's going to be able uh, to contribute. You you know, you're, you're counting on these guys who have gone through your system through a year, who've gotten some minutes, maybe not as many as it would have liked, but getting these guys uh, game reps and getting them ready to play in, in big moments. So I, I think that development's a big piece. I think Aiden really supplements that the the other pieces on the roster a little bit more. Or maybe Kobe would have done a little bit of, of of what you could have seen from some of the guys who are already on this roster. Yeah, I don't I don't disagree there. Do you, let me ask you a question about not necessarily passing on Kobe, but did you? We all we all do this. I don't think anybody, whether you're a fan or you have a podcast or you cover the sport. Everyone looks at the transfer portal. Who's available? Like yeah. the rankings. Was there a player or players that you wanted them to go after that f- kind of fit the Dan Hurley staff mold that you think that they passed on, or maybe I don't know, like it just wasn't on their list. You got a guy or two? That's interesting. Um, I know I was kind of low on FAU all year, but I did like Vlad Golden a lot. Um, yeah, uh, I, I think that could have been a really interesting pick, and I and I. Seems like just from reports that, that maybe they'd been on him a little bit early on. Uh, you know, big seven footer. I mean, I, I I'm very happy with Terrace and the skills that he brings, but Vlad Vlad Golden, I think, probably would have been the one name that was a little bit interesting to me. Kind of give you that that seven footer again and, and give you that one-two punch with, with him and Samson. And and then I'll I'll throw you one more curveball. Like I've done a show now, and we're gonna talk about the roster with Alice Caravan or without. Your podcast host, by the way, um, <laughs> um, or co-host. Uh, so I've also surmised that if they if they lose Alex to the draft, they have one more spot that they're not going to go and get Coleman Hawkins. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Or someone that's going to take minutes from the guys that they've not promised, but they've doubled down on. So who, what do you think they do? Do you think they go international route? I've done I've done a whole show on international prospects. Yeah. Um, I've done some kind of under the radar guys like Supreme Cook. Maybe uh, um, uh, uh, like I forget I forget his name off the top of my head, but there was a power forward from Villanova that's in the that only plays like three or four minutes a game. Do they go with like a practice squad player? W- what yeah. are your thoughts there? Yeah, I mean it'll be interesting. I mean I I don't think they feel necessarily any pressure to to fill the spot if the oh, spot no. stays open. Then then it stays open. This is a team where again the staff I think is just so fixated on that culture that they've created. They're not going to just bring in anyone just for the sake. Of, of filling yeah. the spot so so maybe it, it, it sit, sits empty and, and they, they let it go but this team and this staff have shown that they're able to find some under the radar guys I, I think Joey Calcaterra was a June signing so you never know mm-hmm. who, who comes up uh you know later on as you know they kind of get to see these guys on campus maybe say hey there's a need for this uh if Alex is back or isn't back maybe there's a chance to to see if there's someone late that that could fill some needs that yeah. they have but I, again, I don't think there's any pressure to fill that spot. And if they, they don't fill it, they don't fill it. No, I agree. And 
listen, that's a great segue because we're going to talk about this roster and what it looks like and your thoughts on the new guys, the starters, the recruits, everything about that coming up after this. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or or style, eBay Motors has you covered with over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die. You'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay... You're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guarantee fit. Only available to U.S. customers. All right. We're going to bring back Jared Kotler. Welcome back, Jared. Um, the current roster. Yeah. Feel good about it, right? We feel, we feel okay? Yeah, yeah, no, no reason not to feel good about about what's coming back with this team. I, I think you've got some really good pieces. Uh, saw some glimpses of some of these freshmen last year. Will be sophomore this year, and you always bank on that that nice freshman to sophomore year jump. And uh, I'm excited to see what these guys can do. So, a couple of questions I've asked uh, other folks, and I've gotten varying um, degrees of answers, so to speak. Sure. So, um, we talked about Terrace. Yeah. We talked about that Samson Johnson one two punch. Who starts? Jared Kotler, you're the you're the head coach of the Yukon Huskies. Dan Hurley has bestowed that upon you for a day. You're in practice. <laughs> Who starts? Yeah, I mean, I obviously have to see a little bit more from Terrace to, to make a decision, but just my gut is gonna go with Samson. He's the guy who's been through the system. So. Yeah, been through the system, uh, you know, knows what, what Dan Hurley and his staff are looking for, uh, comfortable there. Um Definitely think there are some ways that you could look to see Samson improve a little bit more. I, I know rebounding was a big thing for him last year and being able to grab some more boards, um, not getting into some quick foul trouble, which I always know is questionable with these big guys. But I think you saw Donovan really learn how to play without fouling in having that offseason as the season went along. So I think that's a big jump you could see from Samson's game. I just think he, he fits this system nicely and you you were you uh you reward the guys who've been around with you and have gone to war with you there so uh you you, you take a guy who's been uh, on a national championship team a couple times to to start there what do you say to this to the person that says Samson Johnson played <clears throat> excuse me a incredible role as they all do you know yeah. like the whole role role player you know uh you know argument everyone plays a role so Samson was had a role this year where he came off the bench and provided energy provided a lob threat, a rim runner, all of that. You know what I mean? So do you do you see the volition in someone saying, well, Terrace has been a starter for most of his career anyway? Um, if he earns that, do you think Samson would be – I mean, I think he would be. But do you, do, you, do you see a scenario where it's like, okay, Terrace is your starter and Samson plays that same role, maybe with extended minutes? Um, may, maybe. Um, I, I, I do think, you know, they end up probably playing close to similar minutes anyway. Yeah. Based yeah. on that. Uh, trying to, to keep those guys fresh and, and, you know, maybe play them each, you know, uh, you know, maybe one gets 25 minutes and the other gets, you know, gets, gets the rest there. Um, but I, I'm not necessarily worried uh, about that either way. I mean, I think Dan Harley's brought in these guys who are comfortable kind of playing any role. I mean, it seems like you, you hear some of the Steph Castle draft talk and he's like, I, I was willing to do whatever for this team. Sure. Um, yeah. You, you get that buy in there. So, guy like Terrace who, who even if he doesn't get the the starting spot you know knowing what he's coming into and, and seeing how players have grown and developed here um I, I I think he takes that you know in stride and the same if it if it goes Samson's way but I I, I tend to lean still the, the Samson side of, of him starting I, I get what you're saying from the role player and he, he's played yeah. a really great great role in what he did and that's kind of the question that's been going into my head with, with Hassan Diara because I yeah me, same question like, what was the perfect six man and, and he played that role so well. Um yeah. it was such a difference to to either having you know Tristan or, or Steph Castle guard you and then then you got a guy like Hassan who's that smaller guard who's gonna be really pesky. Um and, and just kind of shifting that and, and I think it's taken me and my mindset a little bit to to get my head around of like hey th this guy can start he probably should start there and um 
you kind of have to take the roles from last year and put it aside and know that these guys are going to develop. I mean, you saw what the staff did with Hassan from his first year at UConn to what he did last year and, and the impact he was able to make. So I think it's a really interesting kind of juxtaposition argument you have to play in your head of like, hey, you know, these guys are really good in their roles. But at the same time, it, you know, you, a sign of a good coach, sign of a good staff is, is that they're able to get these guys to develop into bigger and better roles, which I, I, I think you'll you'll see from some of these guys this year. Yeah, I don't disagree. I think that's the interesting one, and I think it's a more cut and dry situation with Hassan and, and Ahmad Noel. Is yeah. Ahmad's a freshman? You know, yeah. Terrace is coming in as a transfer, so it's a little. I see there's a little more um, wiggle room for yeah. Terrace to get the nod over Samson versus Hassan and Ahmad. Um, the other, the other question, and this is something that we should talk about, is like how do you how do you work the wing situation? You know what I mean? Like with. Yeah. There's, I mean, it's a great problem to have if you throw Solo in that mix, whether he's yeah. more of a combo guard uh, with minutes with Aiden. Um, now you have Jay Stu, you have Liam McNeely, you have Jaden Ross. Like, how do you work those minutes so everyone's happy and they're productive? Yeah, no, it's, it's a tough challenge there. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm handing back in my coach for the day. Uh, oh, you, I, you're not going to do it? No, no. <laughs> um, no I, th I think it's just something where you're going to have to – just keep throwing guys out there, see see what works. I think early on in the season, when you get some of those buy games, you're going to get some of yeah. those opportunities to really mix and match these lineups a bit. See what works, see see what doesn't work, what works better than others. I, I think that's always the fun part about November basketball is you kind of get to play around a little bit, make some tweaks, see how things work. And it, I, I, it's definitely not a bad problem to have if you're, you're Dan Hurley. You never know when guys are going to go down with an injury for a little bit. And, and sure. I think that was something that was impressive this year with UConn. I mean, you look at when uh, when Steph went down early, Solo stepped up in, in a role that no one really expected him to be playing right away. Donovan goes down for a month and Samson steps right into that that role. So while it might seem like there's a lot of guys for, for a few minutes there, I think there's always going to be situations where you, you, it, it's really a positive and, and a major positive to have the depth that this team is going to have. Because just being able to run guys, keep guys fresh, I, I think when you look at the success that you kind of had these past couple of years, more so probably the first title run uh, in 23, you you go to the bench and, and there's just no drop off between yeah. your your starting unit and the guys coming off the bench here. And, and it you know definitely had that last year, maybe not necessarily to the same extent because I, I don't think they went quite as deep as they did that that first title run. But just being able to have guys that can keep guys fresh. You, you go to the bench and there's really limited drop off. I, I mean, it's a it's a major plus, and to have guys of all all levels being able to just play it at that high level, I think is really impressive. Without a doubt, I'm not asking you this specific question, but are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Have to turn down the volume with all that shouting? Make the switch to Locks on Sports today, a free 24 seven sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories about all that screaming. Locked on Sports Today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Fire T Amazon TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Um, I bet I just, you can't... I was just getting scream at you, Mark. So, uh, now, I, now well, I always... <laughs> yeah, no, and I always I always have to like make sure I'm not yelling that promo because it's like you're talking about not screaming, so it's like, hey! Um, but I, I was about to say, I feel like UConn is probably going to be on Lockdown Sports today quite a bit next year because yeah. it's unprecedented to be going for a third straight national championship. So I don't think I don't think the national media can ignore the kind of the run this year. Like, and I think that'll add some pressure to to kind of these new guys and the staff. I don't think it's going to bother them per se, but I bet you there's going to be your your you go to these media availabilities. You may see a, a few new faces as the as the season wears on. Yeah, no, I'll be curious because, again, for what I thought should have been a lot more media coverage last year from a national perspective, really kind of lacked throughout the season. I mean, you, yeah. you don't have teams going for back-to-back -back very often with a realistic chance of doing it like we, we saw back when Florida did it. And uh, I think you saw it a little bit more towards the end, college game day coming to stores. Yeah. As, as the tournament started to pick up, it seemed like the ball started to roll a little bit more. You saw those feature stories on players a little bit more uh, on what it was like to have that pressure of trying to go back to back. Uh, so I think you did see that a little bit more towards the end. And I hope you do see that coverage because these guys work their asses off to uh, to get where they are. And uh, this team really deserves it heading into uh, a, a year where they, they really do have a chance to do something that we haven't seen. Okay. No, I agree. Um, before we get to the next segment, I got to ask you, man, 
Well, you, you you have Alex Caravan on your show all the time. You're not going to break any news today. No. I know that. Um, we got what is it? Th- three days counting today before the decision. Um, yeah. It's so funny we call it the decision. I've been I've been doing that. Like it's like Alex Caravan's decision. It, <laughs> it, wait, I mean, I'm I'm so ha- I'm so happy for him. You know him yeah. better than I do, obviously. I think he deserves. You know, there were some. I've seen some ridiculous comments in some of my YouTube mentions. It's like, oh, he's you know taking all the time in the world. It's like, yeah, he's earned it. He he are should. you kidding? Yeah. I mean, like, what what what's your thoughts? Like, what do you like? What are your besides the obvious? We all wish him the best, whether he comes back or not. Yeah. What do you think? What if you had to handicap it? From I, I mean, just just from talking with him on the last episode, I mean, I think it's as close as 50-50 as you can really get in, in one of these situations. Yeah. I think it's really just up to him and his team to kind of take in the feedback he's gotten through the combine process, uh, you know, in terms of where teams might take him, the feedback they've given him on, on what they'd want to see him do at that next level and see if that's something he thinks he can really improve upon in, in college. I know when we, we spoke coming right out of the combine, he talked about some of that feedback being, you know, being able to create his own shot a little bit more and uh, and from a defensive standpoint, being able to switch a little bit more guard guys uh, of all, of all sizes, kind of as you see that just as commonplace now in the NBA. So I think it's some interesting feedback there, definitely stuff he can improve upon in college, but definitely things he can improve upon at the next level as he gets the chance as a pro to work on that, you know, 24 uh, seven in that be his full-time job. So uh, it, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a really tough decision and uh, I don't envy, him in the decision making process there. I mean, he, he, he can't go wrong. He's got he's got two great options. Whether it's coming back to UConn, you know, being able to capitalize, you know, with NIL a little bit more, yeah, um, getting to have the chance to go for a three peat, really lock himself in, in all of UConn lore there. But at the same same point, you know, the chance to become a professional athlete doesn't come along for for everyone, and it doesn't come around uh, necessarily at the same same level every year. So completely understand having to capitalize and, and strike when the iron's hot and, and you've got the chance to go pro and, and make a name for yourself at that level. Yeah. I, I wonder like at this point, is it just a, you know, cause I don't know the ins and outs of it. I understand if he gets drafted in the first round, you know, there's a guaranteed contract. If he yeah. doesn't in the second round, it's more like a two way. Um, I wonder, you know, what's the, what the, what, if the feedback is you just it's a leap of faith right you just yeah. essentially say all right i got this feedback i'm gonna stay in or yeah it didn't it isn't exactly what i thought i'm gonna come back for one more year so uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens yeah no i think it's interesting guys i know he mentioned how he got some time to go eat dinner with adama sonogo in, in in chicago and i i think getting to hear some of the experiences from guys like adama or jordan yeah. or Andre, guys he played with who, who went through similar decision making process last year and, and had to to weigh the options. And now that they've got a year of it under their belt, I, I'd be really curious to hear what, what they told him. Uh, didn't get into specifics of that with him, but would just be really curious to uh, to hear what, what that that insight would be, because I, I think that's always interesting. You know, you, you know, someone who's gone through something similar to you, who's had to weigh that decision making process, like what, what they think of the decision they make. I, I think that's always really yeah. helpful feedback in, in some ways, more so than what you're getting from some of these NBA scouts who are telling you, you know, Maybe they're just trying to blow some smoke up you, you know. So you you never know exactly how it all works. But he's got two great options in front of him, and uh, really wish him the best. Absolutely. Well, we're going to talk about the future of UConn, not just from next year, but potential targets for the twenty five, twenty six. Yeah, live recruiting is happening right now. We'll talk about that coming up after this. Very quick to come back. Yes, we have. Listen. Jared and I have been talking about a myriad of topics today, transfer portal, Alex Caravan's decision, um, the roster, all of the different stuff. We even made Jared Kotler the coach of the UConn Huskies for, I don't know, we did like for five minutes and then he quit. So we, I totally, totally get you. Now you see the pressure that Dan Hurley's under <laughs> on a regular basis. Um, but no, I, I, I think the interesting part about um, UConn's culture, you've talked about it, you talked about it a bunch on this and you've talked about it on your show, um, protecting that. They're also not going to stand pat and say, okay, well, we've won a couple titles and, you know, we like to get our transfer portals and we like to find, you know, the Joey Californias of the world who I love, but he's not the number one recruit in the country. Um, For the second year in a row, UConn is 
highly in the mix for the top ranked recruit in the country. Uh, AJ Debatza. I'm probably saying his name wrong. I'm sure people will kill me on, on Twitter and on uh, YouTube. Sorry about that. But also in the mix for Malik Thomas, two top 10 recruits, McDonald's All Americans, five stars. What have you what have you watched of them at all? Like, I mean, I know I I know it's early, so this is it's all very kind of, you know, they're just they're having conversations. They're maybe bringing them in for visits. What are your thoughts? And then if you have any questions for me, I'm I'm happy to answer because I've I've done a deep dive on a, a few of these guys. Yeah, I was just gonna say I'll defer to you for the for the majority of this one. I I, I really have just been so uh, kind of in the present right now and looking at, at what we've had in terms of transfer portal activity. Uh, yeah. And looking at this year's roster versus looking at another year out there. I, I, I think it's really interesting. UConn's been getting involved with some of these top guys, though, um, because just looking at, at, at kind of how things have gone from a recruiting standpoint, they kind of look for those like higher mid tier guys uh, coming mm-hmm. out of uh, at a high school there. So to be in the conversation in the mix, some of these top players, I think, shows you that the status and where this UConn program is right now and, and kind of the, the the cred they have right now. I also, you know what I think it, you know what I think why is not just because of, um, you know, just the, you know, street cred, if you will. It's John Calipari's went to Arkansas. That's not as attractive a spot to go to as it is Kentucky. I mean, we can all hate on Kentucky. We can all hate on Duke and different places, you know, just from a fan base perspective and have some fun. But as far as a recruit, like where you go technically matters. It doesn't, but it does from a perception standpoint. So I think the fact that they've won back-to-back national champions and there isn't a second school outside of Duke that is recruiting these like super classes, yes. like these four and five recruiting, uh, you know, McDonald's All-Americans, that helps to not have that, you know, elephant in the room of John Calipari come in and say, do you want to come play in Arkansas? I mean, who really wants to go play at Arkansas? <laughs> I mean, can we be honest? I, 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 I don't, I think that's a huge reason why that UConn, is in the mix for, you know, three or four of these guys and two specifically. Yeah, well, we'll see when those Arkansas NIL checks start coming through, if, if, if things change a little bit there. Um, but yeah, no, I, I think it's also interesting because I think the recruiting landscape has just changed to the point where yeah. some, some teams just aren't necessarily going out of the, going after the same number of, of high school recruits that they normally would with the, you know, with the amount of players that are available in the transfer portal. I think a lot of coaches have to make the decision like, hey, are we going to go, you know, bust our asses at all these, you know, high school gyms and do all that when, you know, come, uh, come end of March, April and the transfer portal opens, you could yeah. see who's out there. These guys have already experienced playing at the college level and, and you could go after those guys. So I, I think gone are those old Calipari teams where you're bringing in four or five star kids and, and that's what you're running out there. I, I think the game has just changed a little bit. We're in that new era right now, just given the, the transfer portal. I know the COVID years kind of impacted things a little bit more, too, where you had some older guys out there. But I, I, I think you're going to see programs really kind of weighing the experience versus kind of the, the the prospect of what some of these high school kids can do. Yeah, I don't disagree with that at all. I think I've, I've heard coaches even say to, to players, high school players, go play at a mid-major for two years. They'll come get you. Like if you dominate in a big major, the Yukons, the Dukes, the Kentuckys, the Carolinas, they'll all find you because you'll be on their radar. So yeah. I think that's 100 percent true. Like, you know, even a year, a year at a smaller school, you know, to get your feet wet so that you can prove that you're a legit college basketball player can help. So I think you're spot on there. Yeah. There's three, there, you, you, look at the, what, you look at what the recruiting pro, uh, profile of Cam Spencer and. Uh, yeah. He, 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 wasn't the, he wasn't the five-star high school kid and uh, went and proved it at every level. And I, I think that's the route that, that some of these programs are just going to go now in t- terms of looking for those kids who have been able to prove it at the college level. And uh, especially when these coaches are under so much pressure to, to win now, um, you know, putting your your faith in some some 18-year-olds who are, you know, playing college basketball for the first time versus some guys who have gone out there and proven. I, I think you need a nice mix of, of, of both to really win at this level. And I think UConn did a great job of that by being able to surround Steph Castle, who's one of these higher level high school prospects with just an experienced group of, of players. And I think Dan Harley kind of showed what the, the right mix is there. Maybe you have one or two of those high level high school kids, you're able to surround them and, and put them in positions to be comfortable where they're not being asked to really carry the weight of, of the team on their shoulders there. And they're able to spread out uh, the production there. No, I agree. And I think, I think, them going after AJ and Malik. AJ Debatza is number one. Malik Thomas is 10 in nine or 10, depending on where you look. 
they play different positions. AJ yeah. is more of that like six eight, six nine, just absolute freak athlete. Um, positional versatility, key thing for Dan Hurley and his staff. Malik Thomas is a flat out scorer. Like he just is a, a beast of a scorer. So I think the I think they've, as you mentioned, they've laid out the formula. Whether people follow their formula, I think they all should, but they're a lot of people are stupid. I mean, let's be yeah. honest. Like a lot, a lot of people just are really stubborn. And I don't see them doing it because like I had a guy on who covers Duke and they feel like John Shire and his staff are doing the complete opposite, which is they're bringing in like role players that are older to kind of help mitigate some of the younger like super staffs, like the super yeah. recruiting classes. I think they're going to fail at that. I don't care how good Cooper flag is. You know what I mean? Like, so I think UConn is doing the right thing by targeting two, potentially three freshmen like they did this year yeah. and then bringing in those, you know, high level transfers as time goes on. So yeah. yeah, that's, that's the formula, right? I think we figured it out. We've cracked the code. Yeah. I'll take the coaching reins back over now that, uh, now that I figured that out. I think Jared definitely, I think he would be a great coach. I well, think, thanks. you know, I mean, let's be honest, man. You, 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 I saw you do the Chick-fil-A thing and I was like, I'm in, let's go. <laughs> um, um, I mean, go I, on. I, like, I can I'll, rally the troops. I think you I, definitely can. You I give a good halftime speech. I, I can get, I can get a couple teas. I, I can do the job. All right. I definitely could get a couple teas. Let me tell you <laughs> quick, quick story before we, we get out of here. I, I, I volunteered to coach seventh and eighth grade girls basketball 14 years ago last that's the last time i ever coached the team made the finals of the of the the season yeah. i got teed up in the finals <laughs> seventh and eighth grade middle school girls i got teed up so i could not handle it i would be if i was that's why dan hurley is my guy because yeah I, he's been able to quell some of his demons the demons come out when uh when competition uh happens <laughs> i love me. the fieriness. give it give it to me any day <laughs> well listen uh in case you didn't know lockdown sports today is here for you 24 7 covering the top sports stories of the day with local sports at locked on plus our national shows covering every league find locked on sports today now available in the free fire tv channels app this has been another episode of locked on yukon for myself mark Stetto, our special co-host jared kotler saying i want you guys to stay locked in stay fiery stay connected make sure your toughness meter is always rising and as always as always Go Huskies.